We are continuing in our study of the book of Colossians, um, picking up where we left off two weeks ago. But let's pray before we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Paul wrote letters to those early emerging churches around the Roman Empire. And we thank you that he wrote to encourage them, to instruct them, and that through reading them today, we too may be encouraged and instructed. And we pray now that as you have opened your word to our hearts, we may open our hearts to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to start with a couple of questions and do please answer them. How do you show someone you love them? And how do people show you they love you? You might be thinking about your partner or your family, but do feel free to think about anyone that you love. A hug. A hug. Yeah, we're really missing those at the moment, aren't we? Um, and it'd be wonderful to be able to hug, hug our loved ones again in the near future. Verbally, Verbally yeah, we, we tell them how we feel about them, that we love them, that we care for them. Martin. Yeah. Oh, kisses. Yes, kisses are very important, aren't they, Lydia? And, and Rhi, Rhi at home has said, I phone mum every day. Yes. Yeah, when we can't be with the people we love, then, then phoning or emailing or messaging or... Does anybody still write letters? But those, those are, you know, all those things are lovely, aren't they? Helen says contact. Contact. Yes. Also important. Well, thank you all for your responses. And of course, we give and we receive love in many ways. Some people show their love by giving gifts. And isn't it always lovely to know that someone has spent time thinking about what to give you? Others show love by spending time together with their loved ones. And this doesn't necessarily have to be doing anything significant together because often just being in the company of our loved ones is good. Others still share poetry, songs, even internet memes with the ones they love. And that's quite a personal thing, to share something that's significant with another person. Because when we do that, we share something of ourselves too, something that's important to us. But a wonderful way of showing love is by encouraging the person that we love. Well, I'm grateful to have known the loving encouragement of many of you over the years, and I hope I've encouraged you in return. Well, the Apostle Paul knew the power of encouraging words. He met many people on his journeys take, to take the good news of Jesus to the farthest corners of the Roman Empire. And when he moved on, he wrote letters to teach and encourage the people he met. Yet our Bible passage today is the beginning of a letter to a people Paul has never met in person. He's only heard about them from other people. It's others who have told Paul of the great faith of the Colossians. And so Paul is writing to the church in Colossae to encourage them in their faith. He begins in the first half of the passage, which we looked at two weeks ago, by thanking God for them, for their faith in Jesus and for the love they spread to all people. In the second portion of the letter that we'll be looking at today, Paul shows his love for the Christians of Colossae the best way he knows how. He's praying for them. And one of the most loving things we can do for someone is to talk to our Heavenly Father about them. We can give thanks to, for them, as Paul did in the opening verses of his letter, where he said, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. We can also ask God to bless them both generally and in specific ways. Paul does this in our passage today. He begins with a general encouragement. Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. Prayer is a wonderful encouragement to us on our faith journey. When we know that others are praying for us, we know we are not alone. 
Paul goes on to pray three specific things for the Colossian Christians. He prays that they might be knowing, intelligent Christians, that they may live lives pleasing to God, and that they will be strengthened. So firstly, Paul prays that the Colossians might be knowing, intelligent Christians. In verse 9, he tells them, We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. Paul wants the Colossians to know God's will, but not just for the sake of knowledge. Knowledge of God's will needs to be practical. The Colossians need to know God's will in order to carry it out. And this knowledge is to come through wisdom and understanding given by the Holy Spirit. Wisdom which will help them apply their knowledge of God's will to their own lives, situations and communities. If we are to do God's will now in the 21st century, this should also be our prayer. To be filled with knowledge. To not only know the will of God, but to know more of it. For an increase in this knowledge and understanding will make us more like Jesus, who we've chosen to believe in, love and follow. Paul's second prayer is linked to his first. He prays for the Colossians to be filled with knowledge so that, as he continues in verse 10, you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. Good knowledge alone is not enough. The Colossians should also live a good life. Living a good life means living according to the will of God. And Paul prays that the Colossians will be fruitful in every good work. For it is carrying out good works, it is, it is by carrying out good works that they will live according to God's will. And this is a cyclical process. The Colossians will be filled with the knowledge of God's will for them so that they can live lives pleasing to him. Then as they bear fruit in their good work, as verse 10 continues, they will be growing in the knowledge of God. This cycle of faith is one we should desire to grow in too, that we may come to know God's will and so live our lives to please him, also that our good work may be fruitful so we may continue to grow in knowledge of God. And it is this that will bring us to maturity in our relationship with him. Paul's third prayer for the Colossians is for them to be strengthened. In verse 11, he prays that they will be being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Paul knows, and surely the Colossians do too, that if they are to walk closely with God and do his will, they will need to be strengthened by God's grace. The Colossians will need God's strength so that they may have great endurance and patience. These qualities are required during hard times, times of suffering. Now, it isn't clear in this part of the passage whether the church in Colossae is suffering, but Paul prays that they will be strengthened for their times of suffering. For God's work must continue, even in times of suffering. And we see examples of this today across the world, where Christians are persecuted. Churches are open and flourishing, and Christians are at work in their communities at great personal risk to themselves. Their suffering is great, but God's work continues. We're fortunate here in the UK that we can live our lives as Christians free from persecution and indeed often with little rejection or opposition. However, that doesn't mean that we're free from suffering because trials come in many forms. We suffer poor health, we can become unemployed, we can have breakdowns in our relationships. We too need great endurance and patience. We need to be strengthened for our times of suffering. And we need someone like Paul to pray these things for us. 
Well, we've been through tough times in the last year or so, haven't we? And we've faced restrictions on the way we live our lives that have been challenging. Some of us have struggled with facing these challenges. When we walk with God, we believe and trust that we are never truly alone in facing our challenges. But we are called to help one another along the way too. As I mentioned before, Paul wrote many letters. And in another of his letters, the first of, of letters that he wrote to the church in Thessalonica, Paul writes for the Thessalonian church to encourage one another. In chapter 5, verse 11, he says, Therefore encourage each other and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Christianity is not a solitary religion. We're called to form Christ's body on earth, to be Jesus in the world. And each of us needs the support of others to accomplish this. We also need support and encouragement from others in our times of challenge. Can you be an encouragement to someone? Can you pray for someone as Paul did for the Colossians? Can you offer encouraging words? Maybe even consider putting them in writing as Paul did so that they can be read again and again. I imagine those parchments that Paul's letters were, were written on were worn thin by the time they'd been passed around from house to house and person to person being read over and over. And yet those words would have been so encouraging. Can you offer practical support? Maybe there's already someone in your life who's looking for encouragement. If so, pledge before God today your intention to encourage them. If not, ask God to show you someone who needs your encouragement and pray that you'll be ready to do so. If you're in need of encouragement yourself, trust that God will place someone in your path when you need them. Well, if like me, you make plans and resolutions only to break or forget them a few days later, today make a plan you can stick to. Resolve to follow Paul's instruction to encourage one another and build each other up. Then keep looking. Always be on the lookout for ways to fulfil that resolution. Well, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that Paul's letter to the Colossians was preserved for us. We thank you that he encouraged them in their faith and that through reading that letter now, we too can be encouraged. We pray that we, like the Colossians, may be filled with the knowledge of your will so that we may live lives pleasing to you and bear fruit in our good works, that we may grow in knowledge of you. We pray too that we will be strengthened for your service and for our times of challenge. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.